Yeah, in my in my career, you know, I've lost. I remember, I remember I lost three times in a row in Thailand. I was running out of money. I can't. I, I tapped out my family, uh, like asking them for oh, money. Yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't want to keep doing that. Um, it was after my third loss in a row, and my my family were even saying, you know, maybe come back home, maybe come back to uni, uh, maybe this isn't for you. Yeah. And uh, I remember being in my room and I'd be like, what am I gonna have to do to get myself out of this? And I promised myself, I said, I'll give me one more shot to kind of um, mm-hmm. get myself out, and um, I'll put everything into this. So. I trained for four months. I didn't fight. I just trained. Um, I was tight with money. I remember I was fighting boxing in the stadiums on the weekends just to kind of pay for food and um, sure. just to kind of get by. And I know a lot of people, other people are doing it more rough than me, but like at the time, yeah. I was just chasing it and I, I was just hungry and um, I knew that this was kind of like, I'm all in right now. If, if it doesn't happen, then at least I gave it my best shot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting a fight in Taiwan uh, made my flyweight debut, so I was, I was I was fighting those those three losses were all at bantamweight, so the high oh. weight class. Uh, I dropped down the flyweight after that, and then I took a fight in Taiwan. I ended up getting a nine second knockout, so the first punch knocked him out. I fought two weeks later on a cruise ship, Don't I won by a twelve, 12 second <laughs> knockout, um, and then we got to party on the boat for another two weeks. <laughs> uh, two, two days after that, so that was Doing the intro with someone with here, someone, right? we just, yeah, just, yeah, we just like, oh, yeah. but um, no, what's up, guys? We are here, um, we are blessed, we are, we are amazingly blessed here to be joined by Nods. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Yeah, it's good to be here. Nah, yeah. um, no, we're his, joined by the seventh best flyweight in the entire the world. Best. Actually, eight now. I bumped, I went, I went down. <laughs> seven, eight, the seven, no, well, the first, <laughs> actually. <laughs> actually, stuff for the flyweights. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> He's the best fighter, in the he's world, the best yeah. one here. His first one here, I mean, it's amazing. It was very blessed to have you here. And, um, very thankful. Yeah, thankful that you're here. Appreciate it. Let's have a chat about, you know, life, about how everything's going. Um, probably the first question, how was your quarantine, mate? Quarantine? Oh, that was a hard one, bro. I, it, like, it was hard because I just came from Vegas, Las Vegas. <laughs> so I was like, from like the mecca of fighting to kind of leave my bedroom. <laughs> so that was like hard for me to accept. But then after a while, after a few days, I was like, don't fight it. This is reality. Mm-hmm. And just got to get through it so luckily i had a had a bit of a training equipment like in my garage so i could keep myself busy train the day away kind of thing i've got flatmates i live down in point shiv so close to the beach oh, very nice. nice area so like yeah we, we had a good time didn't learn how to cook but somehow <laughs> survived <laughs> still on the two minutes so I, I broke though i dyed my hair blonde I probably oh, shouldn't have. Oh. <laughs> now I've got a baldy. Start again. <laughs> <laughs> refresh. New refresh. Base. Restart. restart. <laughs> yeah. This guy was like this close to doing it. Oh, yeah. I tried to dye my hair blue and I went and bought everything yeah. and it didn't work. It didn't work? <laughs> yeah, lucky. Uh... You had to bleach it first. Oh. Bleach. And How do you then... not know that? You're 22. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. The first time I've ever dyed my hair as well. So, no, I, I saw you went pink as well, man. Yeah, I went a few colors and um, mixed reviews. <laughs> 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 when it was like ginger and then went to like um, blonde and then platinum and then it went to pink and then back to platinum oh, and then mate. I was just like yeah I don't want to be another mouldy coming out of lockdown with blonde hair right? there was too many of us yeah it was like a, few, a, few, yeah, yeah. Like a, a few people were doing it and it was like acceptable and then like everyone, everyone did it, did it yeah. and I was like oh no this is just too fun now. when I came back to the gym there was like five of us all of blonde hair and I was just like oh <laughs> it would have been cool like it, it actually suited me for a little bit and then once I saw other people doing it I was like Oh, the novelty no. of it wore off too much air and i'm always covered in sweat yeah so i was just like i'm just gonna start again shave it off i didn't well i nearly cried when i shaved my head I, like, <laughs> I didn't want to but i was like you know hair grows back it goes back let it yeah. go fair and enough start again yeah. um i guess i want to start like how were you brought up were you so you were born in auckland yep and raised sort of around the area yeah so, so i've been born and raised this this area so i went to point shift primary yeah. um Pontum intermediate and then mount Albert grammar so you know always nice. been around this area always kind of lived around this area so um yeah it's 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 home for me and it, it's been nice um kind of seeing you're still friends with like my, my some of my flatmates are my primary school friends that's you know? cool so, uh, i still flat my brother as well so you know we've got a tight-knit community and tight-knit um, friends and circle and uh yeah it's, it's kind of nice to have that um that relationship and my parents are just down the road in Waterview as well so oh mate um, no it's cool but it's, it's, it's such a good area it's way yeah. better than Sydney 
No, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> it's way better than Sydney. Uh, it's more, um, you know, humble. And, oh. uh, and they're not, they're not trying to rap here. Less, less gabbering, less, uh, <laughs> less drill. Uh, no one's doing shoeies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, no. mate. There's nothing like good old shoey, you know? Get the VV down. Uh, VV is disgusting, but you just got to do it, you know? Just gotta do, just, just things in life that you got to do and a VV and a shoe is one of them. <laughs> you know, have you got then, the Southern Cross on you at all or not? No, no, I'm not <laughs> Like such is life. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that Australian. <laughs> but no, I, my family, uh, so I grew up in Auckland, but most of my family are from Hawke's Bay, oh, yeah. down in Napier. So I go back time to time to catch up for them. And my mum lives down there as well. So, um, you know, my my uh, my hapu and my, my tribe where I come from is in Waikato and um, the Hawke's Bay region. So, yeah, it's it's I'm always drawn back there. So, um it's it's cool to represent them as well as you know my my whanau in Auckland. Yeah, as well. man, that's awesome. Um, what was it like to to move away to go to Thailand, yeah. like to to leave home and I don't know take that massive leap to and to further your career? Yeah, it was a big step, bro. Like when I told my parents I'm dropping out of uni. Um, <laughs> can't relate, see it now. Can't can't relate, relate. Yeah, man. And, my mom's <laughs> <I'm> so <laughs> Yeah, especially like coming from my family, like my. All, everyone's gone to university like my my brother's a lawyer my dad's a lawyer uh, my other brother's a sports journalist for stuff so like everyone has gone down that route but i'm like um kind of the black sheep of the family where i wasn't the best i, I got into uni and you know i was i was doing it but my head wasn't in it and fighting has always been something that i've been passionate about and it's so raw and like the ultimate i always felt like i played all these sports growing up but i always found that martial arts is what um fulfilled me the most because ultimately you're in there alone you can only rely on yourself mm-hmm. and you learn so much in the lead up to it like the confidence it brings you and and all these different attributes that you have in life that martial arts has taught me and um that's why i pursued it and that's why i kind of went all in so i told my parents you know i'm dropping out of uni you know i did cry because i was had a lot of pressure on me at the yeah, time i yeah. didn't want to drop out and i didn't want to disappoint but i knew i had to for, like chase it you know yeah and the only way to do that was to go abroad because back then there wasn't like a blueprint of how to do this you know yeah. Yeah. how to do mma and how to how to get into the ufc so i knew i had to attain knowledge and the way by doing that was to go overseas and and just soak it up like a sponge so i moved over to thailand when i was 19 i think um, one way ticket didn't know anyone over there just went over with a dream and and uh ended up winning a scholarship so they offered free training accommodation food Massive, pretty much bro. the lifestyle to live and train there for a whole year but ended yeah. up staying for about four years so it was awesome I was, I was so shy growing up had a bit of confidence issues got, yeah. got bullied bullied in high school for my height well being my my size you know i'm not the tallest so um but you can knock all of them out. <laughs> <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> exactly now back then i wasn't like i was just learning how to fight so yeah um for me it was more about like installing confidence in myself and knowing mm-hmm. that you know i can always walk away or be the bigger person and, and not kind of be trapped. And I know it's insecurities from other people. They're trying to project onto you. So uh, back mm-hmm. then, yeah, it was, it was an awesome tool that I learned. And, uh, you know, my bullies are my biggest fans now. I <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the guys that, oh, I went to school with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, no, we're, we're Ask good about enough. me. I used to tell you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's cool because it's, it's like a part of my journey. You know, I started here. I know a lot of people can relate uh, being vulnerable at a young age and, and not knowing kind of who you are. Yep. So that's why I went overseas and, and it got me out of my shell, got me to, you know, talk and communicate because if you don't go out and meet new people, you don't have any friends. So um, being in another country at a comfort of home, not close to my friends and family, but I ended up making a new family over in Thailand. So I'm still yeah, close awesome. with them now at Tiger Muay Thai and um, they come over to our, our gym in Auckland and yep. do, they do camps with us. So um, it's cool to have that kind of That's a big club at Tiger. It's yeah, biggest gym in Asia. Yeah. Yeah. Like John, John Wayne Park at it and stuff like that. There heaps of people, bro. Like it's like it's a crazy. mecca of like martial arts in Asia. So like yep. if, you, if you're if you traveling through Asia, you always stop at uh, Tiger. So it's, yep. it's, it is a bit touristy, but our team was legit. Like the fighters that we were producing yeah. at the time, they were all killers, you know, um, like Alex Volkanovsky, um, Peter Yan, who's fighting for the title, um, in a few weeks against Jose Aldo. Um, just yeah. a few names. Can't but... <laughs> yeah, no, it's the, the record is there. Uh, yeah. right? But back then, we knew these guys were going to be killers. Like, it was just inevitable. Like, you couldn't yeah. help but realise that these guys have got talent and uh, you're in it as well. Yeah. So, like, back then, looking at it now, you're like, fuck, 
all of the guys that we're training with have all like elevated and gone to that next level. So yeah, um, it's cool to see. And now it's cool to like bring all that knowledge back to New Zealand and show the new generation. You know, you don't need to go overseas to do this. You can mm-hmm. be homegrown. With with kind of laid out the blueprint of how to do it, and we've bypassed all the kind of shit you have to. Yeah, learn. Sort of like trailblaze the sort yeah, of yeah, New exactly. Zealand pathway to. But it's awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's crazy how like, like ever since I think Izzy. Like he just like, kind of, like he just blew up in New Zealand. Like yeah. the it's rise bigger of than, Yeah, it's bigger than the sport now. You know, like yeah. Yeah. Is- Israel is an icon and and like put a lot of spotlight on mainstream media on our sport, which yeah. is awesome. You know, that any kind of publicity is is good for us. And back then there was no like, it's yeah mainstream media covering MMA. They thought it was blood sport or um, not a real. Um, not a real sport or real yep. talent, but now it's like, you know, next to the NBA, next to the NFL, yeah. um, probably one of the most watched sports in the world. And then the lockdown, it was the only sport happening yeah. soon, which is crazy. Yeah, that was cool to see. Like, I, I feel like sort of like a mom asking this, but uh, like, what is it that draws you to like a sport that is so like, like, I don't know, hurtful? Like, you know, mm. you're, you're punching someone in the face, you're getting punched in the face all the time. Like, it, it's like, it's weird because some people like, but un- uneducated people they think that UFC is just like in boxing like a big money sport like mm. it is but it's almost at like the top like 0.5% get that big money yeah, yeah. so like no one sees the, the 10 years before yeah. you get to that so yeah. what is it that draws you to a sport like that that was like <laughs> like because it, it it's not the money for mm. a lot of and a lot of people think it is but it's, it can't be if you know you, yeah. you, you've got all this sort yeah of you got like 12 you, years of underground <laughs> yeah, yeah. The broken bones Kimbo Slice in the backyard just uh, back <laughs> soul fights, uh, yeah, bro. that shit was the best back in the day like watching that yeah, <laughs> yeah that's back in the day <laughs> yeah. everyone in high school just getting your eyes popped down <laughs> yeah. oh. no but yeah so what is it that you know it's such a such a like taxing sport on mm. yourself I mean you see people like you know bro, recipes by Muhammad Ali you know like he'd gone through it he's eh, he reached those heights but you see how it affects them at like the end of their life yeah so what is it that like makes you love martial arts and love the sport of MMA you know, to get you into it in the first place. Yeah, it's, it's one of these things like martial arts is a lifestyle. Like for me, it was never about the money and it's never been about getting notoriety or being famous or like uh, it's the feeling that you get. Like it's the it's the journey you go through like and, and like learning something and taking your ego away from it. So you're not like, oh, I'm supposed to be the man at this, you know, like. You come into our sport, you'll get humbled real quick. So that's what the mentality you got to have. You got to have an open mind, and you got to come in fresh, uh, and willing to learn every day. Because at our gym at City Kickboxing, we've got five UFC fighters, yeah, um, based out of our gym in in New Zealand, and that's only the guys that you know about. We've got yeah, about yeah. forty other fighters that, on any given day, they could be any of the UFC guys, yeah. and that just keeps us on our toes. Like you can walk in. And get a hiding from like someone that you don't even know. Like, <laughs> Surely this guy's a pro, and he's like, "No, that's just like a, the weekend." He just walked in. That's just, yeah. <laughs> that's just Peter. He came like three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't even know how to tie a shoe. <laughs> but no, nah, that's just how it is at the gym. So that kind of keeps you on your toes because you're like, I can't let these guys catch up because, yeah, um, yeah you want to always keep the the gap between your peers, you know, f- um, as far as you can. But at our gym, everyone's so good and and so well trained that we're training all the time constantly you mm-hmm. know we we take the sport serious and we do it as a full-time job so we're, we're training you know seven days a week monday to sunday all year round like we don't have a season on on season and off season yeah. it's kind of just you have a window of how, how long you can do the sport and you just do it until you can't you know <laughs> but it's how you you're looking after your body as well yes. like outside of training what are you doing um, you know, you, you're looking after it with the physio or chiropractor. Um, <clears throat> you're eating healthy. Are you blowing up in between flights? Like how much weight you're putting on in between? Yeah. Um, that all plays a factor, and that will give you more longevity in this career. So right now I'm 27. I'll be expected to fight for at least another seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, health wise, if everything kind of plays out. But I've, I haven't really had too many injuries in my career. Oh, really? Um, compared to like when I used to play soccer in high school, you know, I used to get injured quite a lot, especially like my knees, and my groin, and like just from the kicking motions. Or just but, sprinting at you with, with <laughs> yeah, their sprigs up, exactly, sliding right. into your ankles. But even doing the rainbow fix, that's what I had. You've <laughs> <laughs> been chopping your legs. Yeah, just bro. trying to kick volleys from. <laughs> Or the headers, <laughs> like trying to hit a ball. That's, that's get knocked out. Yeah, like, that's hard. I'd rather get punched. Just get punched. <laughs> Take a header. Just do it, bro. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just, 
whatever like um yeah it's one of those things like in my sport everything's happening in front of you so you can preempt what's about to happen mm -hmm. and rugby or other contact sports it's so uncontrolled yep. and wild that that's when you get injured so yeah. you see a lot less injuries in fighting because everything's happening and you can uh, like brace for impact or you see knockouts yeah. in MMA, uh, but it's it's not as bad as boxing because in boxing you get an eight count, you can stand, you back, stand up. back up. You <laughs> you could be concussed, but you your body's just naturally going and like um, autopilot. You're just yeah. up and the rest like okay, you're good. But good example is the Anthony Joshua fight. You know yeah, he, he got was out, he got concussed yeah. in like the third round and he fought to like the eighth. Yeah. Which is insane. Which is, that's how you see those. Side like, point out, of... he's gonna beat Tyson Fury next year. Yeah. <laughs> and become the king. Yeah. Oh, Tyson just destroyed me. <laughs> Put the house on it. <laughs> <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> <confident? No. laughs> this guy almost cried after the title. Oh, yeah. They didn't got knocked out. Yeah, that oh. was sad. Eh? Anyway, back to your point. Back to your point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's one of these things. Boxing is a lot different. Um, yeah. Just because you can have the eight count in, in my sport MMA. Um, so I, I guess it is a lot more safer because once you get the hard knock and you, you're not showing signs that you want to be there mm. or defending yourself um, intelligently, yeah. the ref will stop it. And then that's when the damage isn't done um, because you're not taking uh, any more shots when you're hurt. Yeah, so yeah. there's a difference in our kind of sport and um, people only see the bloods from like, you know, getting elbowed or knee, but it's very superficial. Yeah. Um, there are bad cuts, but, you know, they heal and, and you get them stitched up. And the UFC are the best in the in the business with medicals and um we go through so many tests every like six months we got to get redone like yeah you know brain scans or uh, blood blood tests or you know now we've got to do all these covid tests yeah. so um they've got it down pat like where you, you're going to be fighting safe you know you won't be going and coming to fights of injuries and even after the fight you get fully covered with uh whatever surgeries or stuff you mm -hmm. need so uh, pretty pretty lucky to have that kind mm -hmm. of treatment and that, that will help in your long run, you know, when you get injured and you look at and uh, you, you look at your body like a machine, you know, you don't want to just patch it up and be like, yeah, we're good to go. You know, yeah. you want to fix it properly because you know, in the next few years, you don't want that to come back to you and yeah. be like, fuck, I should, I should. Especially if like, you know, in a few years you've progressed to a point where yeah. it's like, like I know all fights are important, but yeah. if you're at a title fight or something like that, your knee gives away that yeah. you injured eight years ago. And people and remember sure that, man, like, I know in our sport, if you're injured and know, some people know that you're injured, they'll target that. Yeah. And that's just how it is. That's the aim. Of, that's the name of the game. It's yeah. you got to use all your weapons and be the, um, uh, take advantages where you can. So it, it's a brutal sport, like in that regards. But yeah. um, that's when you step in. But it's it's awesome to kind of have this journey. I've had over like thirty three professional fights now. Yeah. Um, had my first pro fight when I was seventeen. So my last year at Mags, I had my pro debut. I, no one really knew about it. I remember it. It was at the YMCA. Um, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't really go telling anyone either. Like, I didn't, I wasn't doing You're it. You're always nervous. Reasons. Just, just, yeah. just come home with like all these back. Oh, mum. <laughs> what happened to you? I fell over. <laughs> I I remember, oh, damn. <laughs> my, my, my dad came. My mum still hasn't watched me fight live. Oh, really? Nah. She she would watch it, but she doesn't want to see me get hurt. But she watches it live now. Uh, like, She's on, us. On TV. What happened? Yeah, did, did you win? Yeah. No, I did, I'll watch it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just how it is. I guess, you know. Mums, yeah, mums, yeah. mums will be mums yeah. and they don't want to see their, their son getting hurt. But my whole family supports me and um, it was awesome to fight at home in, in my hometown in Auckland in February. That was massive, yeah. And um, first time fighting at home in about for five years. So to have that kind of support, um, you know, the whole stadium was packed at 10 o'clock in the morning. No in the world you would get that. Yeah. In America, you know, people don't really come until main card. So prelim, yeah. If you're on the yeah, prelims, yeah. it's empty. But at, in Auckland, it was packed. And to hear the everyone get up for the poyo when i came out to that and um you know the, the unique chance you're only here in yeah, new zealand yeah. Yeah. Fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these sayings you just get here is, do it, it, do it. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty um yeah it was pretty crazy just to um, witness that and that that helps you kind of get to where you need to be and rise to the occasion and kind of use and harness all that energy that's in the stadium and and let it you know mm. aid you in your performance so yeah, it was awesome to get the win, and and uh, especially coming off a loss in December, um, to turn it around. I didn't have a Christmas or, or New Year's. I I knew I was going to go straight back to the gym after that loss in December. So things like that, you do, you got to kind of just be in the right headspace and be like, you know, I, I did all the right things. We we're so close to getting the win, but you just got to run it back and do it again. You know, yeah. get back in there, dust yourself off, and and do it again. So that kind of reiterated that like we're doing all the right things, and now we're back in the win column. 
um, four and one in the UFC and mm-hmm. just kind of waiting to see what's next. So yeah. I've got something coming up in the next few months. As you like to hear. <laughs> nah, nah, like nah. to hear. So, yeah, just just waiting to see what kind of happens before the. Just go and fight I Henry think I got his number. <laughs> so if you need extra fighters. I've actually got his. <laughs> I got his number. I give him a call. <laughs> ah, I got you. <laughs> Nods. He's the next prospect coming out of New Zealand. <laughs> Brooks fighting. Fight, <laughs> fighting out anytime fitness. Yeah. <laughs> fighting out of his garage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm talking about that loss. I mean because mm. when you think about it, UFC, it's a collection of. It really is a collection of the best fighters in the world. So. It's like. I mean, it's like just the best like Spartans, it's, it's the best modern the best. day Spartans yeah. so like everyone coming into the UFC is already on a ridiculous win streak yeah. so like when you get into the UFC and you start ba- facing that sort of big time competition is it really a, like the biggest sort of jump that, that you notice not really it's more of like the, like the level of talent obviously is high but um, you put that on such a pedestal that like it's more of like in your head where you're like fuck it, these guys are you know, on another level, but you realize, you soon realize, like they're not. Like the grass. Isn't, <laughs> oh yeah, like, you're there too. But so. that's yeah. the thing: the grass is, isn't um, as green as you think. You know, like, on the other side, and we used to put all that training overseas on on another level, and like these guys are doing something different. But like now, they're looking at us and like, what are these guys doing? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it's been our to our advantage because like they've been sleeping on us for years, mm-hmm. and, and now look at us. You know, we've got two world titles at our gym, another two in the top ten. And they're all saying, oh, you know, they're only doing like it's the fate that they're doing, or it's these movements. But there's so much more that they don't comprehend because it's it's um, so over their head and yeah. it's so detailed mm-hmm. that they'll never get it, and they, you can't emulate that and you can't duplicate that. Which is why uh, at our gym they see the footage of like mm-hmm. our trainings and like we'll do that, and we'll keep, but it's not even about mm-hmm. that. It's the atmosphere, it's the yeah, team, yeah, yeah. and it's the coaches that so all play a little bit of that. Aspect, got that yeah. secret sauce, exactly. <laughs> 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 the Krabby Patty recipe. Right yeah, they've got there. it. Exactly. Bro. Um, yeah, but so about that, like that loss. I mean, a lot of I know a lot of people, like young people, dealing with losses is hard for them. Mm. Like especially when if you've been doing so well for so long. I think that loss, like from you know you, you know better, but yeah. was like your first loss in like four years, yeah. professional loss. Mm. So what was it like to you know not have your hand raised at the end of that, and then coming off that to sort of build towards mm. what's up, what's going on next exactly but it's it's one of these things like it's not the first time i've lost in my life mm-hmm. my record isn't the cleanest i'm now 21 and 8 so mm-hmm. i've lost eight times but you know it's, i've lost but I've, I've never taken it as a setback you know you just learn from it um obviously the other guy was better on the night or something didn't go my way mm-hmm. so you don't want to dwell on um the negatives too much you know there's a lot of positives you can take away from a loss and and you just got to run it back like a lot of things happen and some things are out of your control yeah but a lot of things are in your control so when i'm in camps and i know what's expected of me and i know where i need to be to be able to perform at my best i put everything into it you know so when we're walking in here and we're talking you know how many times you train i was like you know i treat it like a job nine to yeah. five um, that's just the kind of mindset you got to have. It's kind of like Kobe, that Mamba mentality where like he's the first one in the gym and the last one to leave. <laughs> RFP. Yeah. But yeah, it's one of these things like that's the mindset you got to have. And um, what re- kind of resonated with, with me in the lockdown was when I was watching The Last Dance. You guys have seen yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That, that... <laughs> This guy's a big LeBron fan. Oh, you are? So he's, 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 uh, he's watched half of The Last Dance. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> want to watch it. He doesn't want to turn over to the other side. You need to but... watch it, man. But no, just having that um, championship mindset, you know, that that, um, that attitude that Michael Jordan bring to the gym every day, you know, he never wanted anyone to beat him at training. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't the most light guy, but, you know, he won championships and he, yeah. he, he like brought the best you, out of you, you know? Yeah. And that's what our kind of culture that um, is what, what, we, what we have at our gym, you know, people to, that ha- take losses, your teammates will pick you back up and be like, you know, who cares? Turn up to training on Monday and we, we do it again. Mm-hmm. It's not going to like... Um, be a setback you just gotta pick yourself up and do it again but like you gotta build yourself up to be able to do that um and you gotta have a good circle and um good men around you or good people around you that aren't gonna just be yes men or or um tell you what you want to hear they're mm-hmm. gonna tell you what you need to hear which is yeah. what our coach eugene is good at he's very good at um uh being straightforward straightforward yeah. but and then he'll personalize his approach to how he needs to motivate yeah. you so like with me and izzy we're completely different where you know he needs to kind of be on izzy's case to be get the best of him but for yeah. me i'm 
I'm always going to be there. I'm always going to be turning up. I'm going to yeah. be giving my best. So he doesn't need to be as like hands on, like a military uh, yeah. sergeant, you know, yeah. um, drilling it the whole time. But yeah, in my in my career, you know, I've lost. I remember, I remember I lost three times in a row in Thailand. I was running out of money. I can't. I, I tapped out my family, uh, like asking them for oh, money. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to keep doing that. Um, it was after my third loss in a row, and my my family were even saying, you know, maybe come back home, maybe come back to uni. Uh, maybe this isn't for you. Yeah. And uh, I remember being in my room and I'd be like, what am I going to have to do to get myself out of this? And I promised myself, I said, I'll give me one more shot to kind of uh, mm -hmm. get myself out and um, I'll put everything into this. So I trained for four months. I didn't fight. I just trained. Um, I was tight with money. I remember I was fighting boxing in the stadiums on the weekends just to kind of pay for food and um, just to kind of get by. And I know a lot of people, other people are doing it more rough than me, but like at the time yeah. I was just chasing it and I, I was just hungry and um, I knew that this was kind of like, I'm all in right now. If, if it doesn't happen, then at least I gave it my best shot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I ended up getting a fight in Taiwan, uh, made my flyweight debut. So I was, I was, I was fighting those, those three losses were all at bantamweight, so the high oh. weight class. I, I dropped down the flyweight after that. And then I took a fight in Taiwan. I ended up getting a nine-second knockout. So the first punch knocked him out. I fought two weeks later on a cruise ship. Don't I won by a 12-second <laughs> knockout. Um, and then we got to party on the boat for another two weeks. Uh, two, <laughs> two days after that. So that was pretty mean. Um, and then I picked up five knockouts in a row, all first round. Um, so it's, it's kind of crazy that but where I was yeah, is yeah. what I kind of needed to kind of light that fire underneath me that... Um, just push me to, like dig deep for those exactly, you know, yeah. four months was like a like a hustle sort of and yeah and it just kind of snowboard into um success and then i got on a five fight one streak ended up getting picked up for the ultimate fighter this so i was on that show back mm -hmm. in 2016 season 24 yeah who's your so, coach so henry suhudo was henry. my coach what a coach yeah <laughs> who's the opposite coach uh joe benavides Oh, there's some good coaches right yeah. there. <laughs> some good coaches. <laughs> some good coaches there. Yeah, right. No, they were the man. Um, it was mean. It was a good. It was a good experience. You know, being in Vegas, living there for seven weeks, being filmed twenty four seven. Yeah. Um, must be way different to what you're used to. Uh, if you've been filmed for twenty. Like yeah, there was just no like. There was no. Uh, it was no editing. So like, but they come into the room and like at the start you're a bit awkward. You're like still having conversations with people. <laughs> and you didn't really know what to do but then after a while you didn't even care you, yeah. you'd be in your undies just talking shit you know? <laughs> it's just how it was but it was cool it was cool i'm still friends with a lot of those guys yeah um, i think there's five of us still in the ufc yeah um from that season um and, it, and it's crazy that you know we could be fighting our coaches in the next few fights so um they can all get it and they can all catch his ads now. <laughs> <laughs> now, but i've got a good relationship with henry um he's kind of mentored me through my ufc career yeah. um every time i'm in vegas or um he's he's out these ways we always uh, catch up and yeah um yeah he's he's been good in that regard so it's kind of you know the act he puts on about triple c and stuff yeah. <laughs> that's funny yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that's it's, just, on, it's just playing the game you yeah, know? yeah yeah people are gonna be talking about him if he's cringy or not um yeah. they like him or hate him triple yeah. c. <laughs> they like him or hate him they're still gonna be watching him so oh. that's the approach did you taking. say that he retired because he was scared to fight you oh he could have <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what i've heard as well <laughs> Nah, he. I heard apparently he's got his new, a first his first girlfriend, so oh. he's like all loved but, but, up. Now. No, I remember <laughs> I had that thing with the the Bella. Um, oh yeah, from WWE. She rejected him. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah, I was like, Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> when he was trying to... You and John Cena. <laughs> yeah, but that, it's cool to have um, to see what he's done with the division. You know, he bit you know DJ bit TJ when he was. Yeah, man. Um, Coming I mean, down he, the flyway, like, he's saved. I mean, it's not like he's saved flyway, but he's done. Yeah, he's put yeah. it on the map for sure. And um, he's beating Dom, Dominic Cruz recently, yeah. and then saying he's going to retire. I don't believe it. I feel like he will come back. <laughs> yeah. Um, he'll just kind of buy his time and come. He back just wanted to start from the bottom. He was getting bored. He'll come back champions. with a. He'll come back with a better deal, eh, Dan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's everyone's just asking for more money, eh? Why not? Yeah. Don't blame him. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, if you see McGregor getting what he gets, I mean, mm, it's, exactly. it's like, Why not? it'd be hard, especially, you know, you see what happens with like uh, John Jones and he's asking for the, with the Nganu fight. Yeah. I'd be asking for like, yeah, I've got some billion dollars to fight that <laughs> yeah, too. If I, yeah. but, nah, if I was between John Jones, I'd ask for the most money I can. <laughs> John Jones? Oh my gosh. Oh, John fought. Jones is he'll probably end up fighting Izzy. That's the fight they need to make. That would oh, be, oh my God. That'd be a mad fight though. Man, that's crazy because I mean, that's crazy. Like, I think the, he's the thing is weird. there, you know, like the the animosity is there, like the build up would be yeah. as big as like a is that like, like a, a elder oh, I don't know if you, is that like a actual like they don't like each other or no they they hate each other oh 
But secretly, yeah. John Jones loves Uzi. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not gonna lie. Like John Jones is the goat, but it's always him starting it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's no a, definitely. I always feel like it's him starting it. But, yeah. Like, hey, if you're he, okay, you can I've heard it. a lot of stories about him. I've, I've got a few friends that have trained with him in mm-hmm. um, Albuquerque. Yeah, Greg oh, Jackson. Greg yeah. So I heard he's not a good person, but you know, I'm not. I'm, I don't know him personally, so I can't. can't yeah. I, I can't judge him yeah. off that. But I, what from what I've heard, he's not a good teammate and. But yeah, yeah. I would love to see that fight. That's the that's the fight. That's that a massive. Fight. I reckon that's the money. Like, yeah. Set it up, Dana. UFC Auckland. <laughs> UFC Spark yeah. Arena. We'll sell it out. We'll hey. sell it out. Hey, we will sell it out. No, I want the that. We'll be the media team. Part. You don't need Charles on it, and like, we, we just get us on here. Exactly. <laughs> I want it in this garage. <laughs> it's gonna happen. No, I mean, yeah, that's a massive fight. Um, what's it like, like, being like, if you know you're fighting in Las Vegas. Yeah. The night before your fight, are you still trying to get out into the casino? Or <laughs> are you still trying to play some black? Is that my Michael Jordan? <laughs> the uh, night before the, the back rat table? Or? Uh, <laughs> put the house down like, <laughs> just for my fight. Nah, uh, those things like when you're in, when you've had a lot of fights now, like I could fight anywhere. I could fight in this garage if I had to. Yeah. Um, it's just like just another, just, just another, another person. It's just another cage, mm. just another day. Um, so for me, the novelty of like fighting, um, in places. Um, there are fights that you know are more special and do mean a, a lot more like fighting at home and yeah. Um, yeah. making your UFC debut those kind of things but end of the day it's just you and your opponent in there um, so I, yeah, it doesn't really matter where where I need to fight but when I fought in Vegas I was cool fighting at T-Mobile you know that's massive stadium massive, there yeah. um, being on the strip just you kind of soaking up. soaking up all the vibes we went out after the fight but lead up to it you're so busy with the weight cut media yeah um, You've got so many things you actually need to do on fight week. It's not just like chill in your hotel and, and turn up, you know. You, it's more, um, yeah, there's so many things you got to do behind the scenes that people don't realize. And then obviously making the weight is um, half the job and then putting and on a show. So it's half a. It's just a part of the job. It just um, comes with the sport, man. Like so many people are cutting a lot of weight and that's why you have a nutritionist. You've got a big team behind yeah. you that help you prepare. And um, that's the reason I make weight. <laughs> <laughs> I love to eat, you know, everyone loves to eat. Yeah, yeah. Especially you gotta... if you're from, like, there's so, like, and the, the food in New Zealand compared to Australia, it's like, you gotta, you gotta give it to the food in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> so you just got it. Yeah. Like, oh. Is it bad in Australia, is it? No, nah, the, the kebabs are better in Australia, but that's about it, you is know it? what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, I love food and I, I love to, um like, indulge, especially after a fight, I'll, I'll give myself two weeks where I'm like, yeah. I can yeah. do whatever I want. <laughs> and then it's like, Back go cold it. turkey. Yeah. Like yeah. I just got to cut myself up, uh, cut myself off. Otherwise I'll blow up too much, you know? So yeah. what, what weight do you walk around at? So I walk around about like 69, 70 kgs. And I was fight at 57. Oh so God. I cut about cut, over 10 man. kgs to get to fly. But it's over about 10 weeks. That's how much week time cut. I uh, usually, um, yeah, cut down from. So that's why I have a nutritionist <laughs> and I have a, um, like a meal prep sponsor, th- uh, yeah. Think Food, which they shout uh, make. Think yeah, thanks. Shout, shout out Think Food. <laughs> shout out Jordy, the flight dietitian, my shout nutritionist. Out Jordy. He's from Brizzy, actually. So Is he? Yeah. Oh, we don't worry about Brisbane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's doing, bruh? No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, it's 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 important to kind of set yourself up and um, just make your life a lot easier. You know, I don't want to be stressed fight week. You know, having to cut extra weight where I could have managed it ten weeks before, yeah, and slowly yeah. bringing it down. Um, but that comes with experience, you know. You learn what how your body works and what works best for you. Um, so for me, I've kind of got it down pat now. Uh, I usually have to make, I usually fight four times a year, so yeah. I got to be that weight four times. Four, um, yeah. So in between camps, I don't like to blow up too much. That's why mm-hmm. I kind of give myself a time frame where it's like, okay, eat what I want, don't think about it, just go hard, and then just be like, okay, right. I cut yeah. it, cut it off and um, slowly kind of rein it back in. So. Yeah, it's good to kind of not put restrictions on yourself too much because at the end of the day, you know, you're only human. You've got to live your life. Yeah. And 100%. you miss a lot of it. You, in this fight game, you miss a lot of occasions, you know. I've had to sacrifice a lot of weddings, funerals, you know, celebrations, birthdays, yeah. my, own, my own birthdays, you know, but it's just it comes with it. After your fight, that's when you can, like, celebrate. So yeah. when I said I missed New Year's and Christmas last year, um, it's a simple, it's an easy sacrifice when, like, after the fight, you know, I, Went to Vegas. So <laughs> it's Christmas after the yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You get yeah. paid, and and now you can actually enjoy it, and like yep. not, um, you've earned it, you know. So it's a it's a good way of looking at things, um, and yeah, it's a good mindset to have. Yeah, um, I think I wanted to like, like 
it's probably the first time I've, I've spoken to another human being mm. that could definitely knock me out. <laughs> I'm on the show every week. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I spoke to the problem. Like, what does it feel like to, to knock someone out? Like, is, is there remorse or is it, is it just like, is, that's it? I don't think there's remorse. Oh, yeah. All right. It's one of those things. That's his business, man. Like he's trying to do the same to you. Fair enough. It's a mutual yeah. agreement. We're we're both we're not forced in, into this. We're both yeah. um, agreed to it, and um, it just comes with the fight game, bro. That's a it's a tough sport, and it's cutthroat like that. It's either you or you or me, and you know you got to think like that. But there's no emotion, you know. After yeah, yeah. I've had good friends that I've had to fight before, mm-hmm. uh, but it's just what it is, you know. I, I would fight a teammate if we we're fighting for the title. Um, obviously not can come get <laughs> if you can make five way day this is one of the things like if the paycheck's right and um, you're fighting for a world title you can make exemptions but most of the time you're not fighting teammates or um, the circle's too small like yeah, yeah. I have friends that are in the flyweight division in the UFC but mm-hmm. they're not like you know close friends yeah, you not, know you're going to be fighting them eventually yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just what yeah. it is we'll go have a beer after the fight and we'll go get paid you know um, this is a fighter's mentality then and in, in this fight game, um, if you're in it to hurt people or in it for the wrong reasons, you won't last long. Yeah. So you've got to have that kind of martial arts mentality where um, it's more than – there's a mutual respect there already. So, like, you step into the octagon, you already respect your opponent that much that you have to respect them and go all out. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's just the the code of the, of the sport and – you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. Yeah, that man. kind of mentality. Well, I guess yeah, MMA is one of those sports where like any, literally anything can happen in the ring. Like, like if you could genuinely throw yourself in the ring with like John Jones and you could you could knock him out. Like, as anything can anyone's got a punching like chance. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I guess that makes sense in that sort of um, aspect. Yeah. But landing the clean shot and seeing someone you know rock <laughs> and then hit their head hit the canvas. Like, there's no better feeling, you know, when you've landed, <laughs> you know, when you've landed that clean shot, yeah. and there's just no movement after the, there's no need to like follow up, you just yeah. it's done, you know, you get the walk, Mark Hunt, the walk, Mark Hunt walk off. Walk off. Oh. that's like that's goals, you know. You know what's everyone, funny though, I feel like, like some now. of those Mark Hunt fights, like if he didn't walk off, I feel like the fight could have kept going, <laughs> which is the fact that he walked off, just walk off, he's like, oh, okay, these are, but you would not want to get a punch by Mark Hunt, oh, that guy, yeah, you're right bombs in his hands you know yeah. um, like, I wouldn't want to get hit by his chin <laughs> <laughs> I, so, that guy like in his prime probably had the most iron chin you could yeah. ever see I watched a fight um, him and uh, Ray Siffle yeah. just, I just rewatched that fight the other day yeah, dope, they just right? stood there and just <laughs> punched each other in the face as hard as they could and nothing Swipe happened and those two those kissing two hands each other, kissing each yeah. other in the, um, a big fight I saw after one of Izzy's fights he was paying homage to sort of you know David Tua is very simple as Mark Hunt and all that. How how big of it is New Zealand's fighting history to CKB? Like, yeah, it's big, man. Like that, um, the combat lineage in New Zealand has always been, you know, at the pinnacle. Uh, back in the nineteen nineties, um, New Zealand was at the top. Like, yeah, yeah. If if you've um, seen anything about where we're from, the no name, you know, David Tua and Ray Sefo and yeah. Mark Hunt, um, just destroying up in K one. Exactly. All that yeah, in Japan, you know, the, it's just. In our blood, in our culture, you know, being Māori or, or from Pacific Island, um, you were brought up in that kind of warrior mentality and that trench warfare where, like, you don't need to um, learn, you know, how to, you know, yeah, yeah. fight for for everything, but it's just kind of embedded in us. So we can kind of draw from that and use our ancestors as, like, um, guidance to mm-hmm. Channel it into the ring. So, like when I fought in Auckland and I was wearing my greenstone, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you could feel like the mana, like kind of um, absorbing into me. I know I'm going deep here, but like you could yeah, feel yeah. it and you can use that and harness it. And it's like now you're not even in the ring by yourself. You know you've got your whole ancestor yeah, two man, awesome. behind you. So, um, I feel like that elevates us on that that new level. But but beyond that, the techniques that we have in New Zealand is top notch. Like. People are just starting to realize like what we're doing and fighting, and they're watching all the footage and they're realizing the breakdown and how like clinical our striking is. Yeah. Uh, but now we're learning everything, you know, wrestling and juju- uh, BJJ, jiu jitsu, and it's leveling up. And it's not just like those sports; it's MMA in general now. So um, to have it back here now, New Zealand being back on top, mm-hmm. um, it's awesome to see. But yeah, those guys are what the pioneers that paved way for for all of us. Um, because yeah, at our gym, all of them started together. So BLG is Balmoral Liga. Yeah. That was 
City City Kickboxing before it was oh, okay. uh, Belgium. So that's where all those guys came from. Mark Hunt, um, Ray Sefo, Doug Viney, my coach now, Eugene Beerman. They all came from the same gym and they all use that same system. So now yeah. the system that we're using, we've just modified it for MMA. Yeah. Um, but it all started back then. But like yeah, 20, it's all got like 20, a successful foundation. Like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All those fighters were successful. Your phone back on the charge? Or... Oh, I'll check it, yeah. oh, I'll check it up. Ah. Yo. Okay. Are you okay? That's really cool, but like when you're like walking to the ring, you can just feel that energy. Yeah. That's pretty. You want to um, harness it, you know, and not let it take away from you. Because yeah. a lot of people shy away and be like, you know, doubt yourself or um, think you haven't done enough or have I trained hard enough or what's the other guy going to do? It's like, nah, it's full confidence. I'm out here to have fun, put on a show and mm -hmm. just show everyone, you know, what we do or what I do, you know? Yeah, that's great. You got to have full confidence. So I see a sports psychologist to kind of get me in that mindset, mm. um, which is important, especially at this top level where, you know, to have that 1% advantage is everything. Yeah. Um, so there's a guy's named David. Um, shout, shout out David. Shout out David. David. Shout out David. David. He's a powerlifter. New Zealand, <laughs> New Zealand powerlifting champion. Oh, oh wow. Man, man, he's, man, he's, man, he's a beast, bro. Just deadlifting 8,000. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. Deadlifting cars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and and shit. Shit. Well, throwing up like those freaking logs in it. Yeah, bro. <laughs> So no, it's cool to have that kind of coaching because we do so much physical, work on our nutrition so much, but if you're not doing anything about your mental, um, then you're kind of, fighting's all mental, you know, all, yeah. sports all mental. Um, and there's uh, being able to deal with pressure and uh, not let it affect you come, you know, game day. You want to yeah. switch on and be, be on point and not have to think, just react, just do it, um, which is important, you know, and, and especially in that, this day and age, the youngsters, younger generation, um, Mental health is a big thing at the moment. Um, people dealing with coming out of lockdown, feeling a bit socially awkward or yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, feeling anxious, you know, overwhelmed, all these things. But if you have the right tools and, and um, coping mechanism, mechanisms to kind of deal with all of that, um, which martial arts has helped me definitely being able to um, not overthink things and, and kind of let go of things and only control what I can. Um, so I feel like it is important for, for anyone to kind of... Um, recognize their their uh with their well-being and, and know where they're at and it's not talking about it as a great as a great way to kind of deal with it uh but just having like you know breathing tools or having cold showers mm -hmm. or that kind of stuff that bring you back back into the present instead of going off on the, all these tangents thinking worrying about all these different things where if you just focus on the present focus on the breathing or that's why cold showers are good because it kind of takes away everything yeah. and you can feel everything uh this is something I do as well, uh, because obviously I deal with the same issues everyone else deals yeah, with. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, just in front of everyone, There's nowhere to hide. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, because like a mental, the mental side of sport is massive, especially mm. at like those higher levels. But like I've I've talked to some friends, you know, even if they're just playing representative like rugby over here, and it's mm. like they experience injuries and stuff, and they get cut or they mm. get left behind. I mean. Yeah, it's, it's really important to look after yourself in here as much as you do your body. Mm -hmm. um, I think what Izzy said that he's like, sees a therapist as mm -hmm. much as you see the know. same guy, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah? yeah. So, yeah, like that that must be like a driving force as to why you, you've become so successful uh, because you've been able to keep sort of both sides of... Balance it out, yeah. yeah. And just know when you need to kind of take a step back, take mm -hmm. a breather um, and, you know, open up. I've got a good circle, like obviously my family that I yeah. open with and um, they kind of know how it all works and uh, people don't realize you know when you go into camps and, and get ready for fights there's so much shit you got to deal with outside of actual training you know yeah life is normal and you got to just be able to turn up to training and put on your best face and um, act like nothing's wrong so when you step into the cage people don't care about what you've gone through they just see the end product yeah so they see you know he's he's made the weight he's he's made his walkout he's in the cage but there's been such a big build up um so to not like let that weigh heavy on you or whatever you've dealt dealt with or um, you've been dealing with your camp, you just got to get in there and and do what you've been doing and not let it, anything kind of affect you come fight night. Mm -hmm. After the fight, you know you can deal with all your problems and and uh, you know cry to your missus or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, it's it's a big part of it. And uh, another thing that has kind of been important to kind of realize in the lockdown, uh, what I was uh, thinking about a lot was you know. I couldn't train normally. I didn't have a gym to go to because we couldn't leave our house. Yeah. Made me realize, you know, this is all temporary. You know, all of this 
fighting and, so and um, success even yeah like. exactly it's all taken away not taken away but temporarily just put on hold so it made me realize you know this isn't forever i've got a shelf of how long i could do fighting for so i need to make sure that i'm setting myself up for after fighting mm -hmm. so like it made me think about a lot of things um to transition into after yeah, fighting yeah. and i want to be doing that now so when i make that decision when i want to retire it's there not, for you to yeah, do and yeah and i'm not forced to keep fighting when you know if, I if my head's not in it anymore yeah so like little things like i'm into clothing and i'm into fashion so i've been working on a, uh, like a clothing label oh, with that's one of massive, my mates. um it's coming out soon actually Ooh, so gosh, keep on the lookout for that. <laughs> <Another> look <out. laughs> if you like vintage or um you know streetwear no, uh, that's also could be up your alley yeah but yeah it's, it's something that is new to me and it's cool to get my foot in the door and yeah um just yeah something on the side you know it's obviously not taking away from what i'm doing but yeah it's just kind of have cool to have something that you can let, let it grow and and uh maybe become my full-time thing later yeah, on yeah. after fighting so well it's important because you, you see lots of sort of athletes and you know people who have been sort of up there and mm. then they don't use their money wisely nah. they don't invest um yeah. And then it's sort of, you know, it, it leads them into situations where they're like, you know, worse off after yeah, they're fighting. Because, exactly. I mean, like, I'm not, you know, naming or any, but, you know, we look at you David Tool and it, stuff yeah. now. Like, uh, you know, he got messed around, but there's different situations where you look at it and, you know, they could have done a lot better yeah. and he could have done with some guidance. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. it's, it's cool to see people now, you know, doing the right thing yeah. where so people can follow and, you know, you see how it is. Yeah. Got to be smart with your money, man. Like, <laughs> can't just blow it out. I'm not naming any teammates, but no. <laughs> I have teammates that blew, <laughs> blew us 50k in a few months, and oh, oh. yeah, it, it went fast. And you know, you can't get that back if, if you think it's going to last forever, it's yeah, going to yeah. go as quickly as it came. Yeah, um, so yeah, you just got to be smart. And obviously, the team's good at like, um, not showing you, but like helping you spend like, your money yeah, right yeah. the right way. Uh, pull up in a McLaren, but off that, they like. What what are you like when you know like your nine to five job, but you get like those kind of weeks off during the year? Like what do you like? What are you into like besides fighting? Yeah, like what do you like to like? How do you get away from like? Um, so I do like mountain biking. Um, Ooh. I grew up. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Downhill mountain biking. So I go down to like Rotorua quite a lot, and out to Woodhill, out uh, Riverhead and shit. Um, a lot of my mates from high, um, my primary and mates that I grew up before do it as well. So yeah. it's it's cool that we have that kind of um sport to kind of just take our minds off shit like obviously it's a pretty high high impact sport and yeah. you come off you're gonna get injured so i don't go too hard but mm -hmm. um it's always fun to go down and fast and get a little um, adrenaline rush yeah exactly down. like well, obviously doing fighting you like to emulate that kind of thrill yeah um so that, with that i'd like to do that as snowboard as well um i was in my my high school snowboarding team back in the day yeah um, you said a high school, school snowboarding, yeah, snowboarding right. team that's that is yeah, hectic. We used to go to Snow Planet like every second week just to get practice on eh? And then we'll go That's just an to, excuse to leave school. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that in my high school. Can we get a Snow Planet? Snow, snow it was dope though. Me and my brother were in it. Um, I ended up getting top 10 in North Island for like slope stuff. So like, all the, the the jumps and the rails and stuff. Oh my so gosh. at one point it was actually snowboarding or fighting. <laughs> I was like, do I want to chase winter or go to Thailand? Go to Thailand. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, we got Kai Kai of France. There's a professional snowboarder. <laughs> Just got back from Sweden. <laughs> Just got back from that. Once your Olympics. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. But no, it was it's cool to kind of have all these different sports that um that I still like love mm -hmm. and still like doing. It's just not my priority at the moment. And obviously yeah. you've got to be careful about injuries and stuff and um just I can't really commit too much time to all that yeah. stuff. But I I'd still like doing it and um obviously when I retire and stuff, it's yeah. still there. Yeah. Um outside of all that, you know, I like shopping, I like buying sneakers. <laughs> um Collecting, you know. What's your yeah. most expensive pair of sneakers? Yeah. Um, probably my Sean Witherspoon off. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. I uh, got them for retail since so two thirty. Oh, so yeah. I got, oh, that's a, yeah. Yeah, but they, I think they got like about two grand. Two yeah. grand. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying. To, I was looking online, like I just appeared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, not today. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny because they will never get made again because Sean Witherspoon said he will never work with Nike. Yeah, oh, really? they, that's yeah. it. So that's why they've, work that's the why they've gone up. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something to do with like um, ethics or something. Like I think it was like... Oh, they're using Switch like Shop. Switch <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Yeah, or, or um, not recyclable. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's one of the few. But like... You know, that's massive. Does anyone out there want to buy me some shoes? <laughs> <laughs> My address now. But yeah, it's, it's cool to kind of have something like that. Like obviously fashion is a, an extension of your personality. And I'm always wearing training gear so like the when i face jacket when, on. when i get a chance to wear normal shit like i want to make it count it will like at least 
make it cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No. What Do are you boys into outside of um, obviously talking shit? No. <laughs> we, more talking more shit. Talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, we, we watch a lot of sports, so we're yeah, like, yeah. we're like, you know, like I, I heard Izzy say he was a fan before he was. So we're just the fans that keep being fans. <laughs> yeah, we're the fans um, that are staying fans. fans. That act on. <laughs> we love to be fans. <laughs> you yeah, guys I mean, play footy or like rugby? I used to play rugby league. Yeah, we both used to play league. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we, I mean, we just kind of like watch a lot of sport, then yeah. like complain about the people well. Than, than he's um, trash. <laughs> you know he, he's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's cool. Like um, the Warriors on Monday, uh, on Friday. Yes, I can't stand it. the Warriors. Eh? I can't. Stand Who's well, your we team? Canberra. Who the Raiders? Yeah, I was. Yuck, my, Terry Campese was my favorite player oh, in yeah? high school. Uh, yeah, well, he was actually real good on Stacey Jones. Yeah, um, the rugby league game. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was like twenty two yeah, with like a um, like with a ball. Yeah, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> No, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I paint sneakers. Uh, we, we do like a oh, yeah. different kind of stuff like that. Um, he works at Nike, so oh, kind of like a... <laughs> if you want to come in the botany store, you got your friend. You, the... you know when all the Jordans are dropping? Are we get yeah. you get the Royal Tower? Yeah, I didn't get them, but they bon- last week. Bonnie's like the yeah. store that I, I loved out, actually, out of all the. <laughs> Everyone at the yeah. Sylvia store bought it, and I was just like. I know. Well, maybe I can uh, use you as a, my next plug because my other one. Hey, <laughs> He's just falling out. Come on, you had one <laughs> shot and you let me down. <laughs> oh, I got you. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got oh, you. Man. Yeah, no, we're in, yeah, so I mean, we're into a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's it's cool to you know, and especially we got this. It's cool. It's like a platform. Mm. I mean, it sort of started off as like just like jokes. We were kind of just here, and then yeah. we did an episode with one of my friends, Jared, who um, we we're talking about how because he's been. He's he's a really good rugby player, but he's been he's popped his shoulder I think like six or seven times. So just the way he had to you know deal with overcoming those injuries mm-hmm. at like a young age yeah. when like there's so much pressure on you to succeed, and that the, like yeah. the reaction from that episode, we were getting messages like, man, I listened to your episode and it was like really cool to see like you know hear real stories about real things, and we sort of realized that like this is a platform that we can use to you know help people yeah, and like, spread messages, stories, even though like yeah. we don't. Yeah, you know, it's so, like we don't have like the coolest stories ourselves. I mean, like we get people on, like yeah. like you no, and yourself, cool. that can benefit other people, and it's cool. I mean, like even if it's small, like if, yeah. if we help one person, mm. like we're doing, we're doing something good. Yeah, exactly. No, it's cool to go. Um, have you guys shed some light on things that people don't usually talk about or like people don't know about? Because um, yeah, because I mean, people see the UFC and they sort of just see Conor McGregor and they think it's such like a glamour sport mm. when there's like no one sees the hard yards before him. You know the no, not the. Before. Ten that, years in Thailand or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah that you're spending taking knees to the gut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from, yeah. I've watched those like um the Tiger Muay Thai tryouts. Oh yeah. Oh my god, these guys are kicking the pad. Yeah, and the trainers like <laughs> sweep, <laughs> one kick, just sweep the leg. Yeah. 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 Ten kicks on the second one. <laughs> oh, it's like, bro, what did I even do? My dad, used to, my dad used to make because my Come dad loves Muay Thai. Oh yeah. So make me watch those all the time. I was like, Dad, just chuck the footy on. <laughs> yeah, I want to see uh, just just wiki, just right? kicking bamboo trees down. Yeah, it's like, right. oh, no. Thai's another level. Like, They're crazy. Because like, it's like, that's a national sport. Like, Muay Thai is Thailand. So yeah. when the, the trainers that day were putting the foreigners through, like, the tryout um, auditions, they pretty much said to them, we want to see their heart. We want to see who wants it the most. So that's yeah. why they sit, they took it, like, serious. They're like, Oh yeah, we'll knee you in the head and see if you still want it. <laughs> How bad you want it, you know? But we're gonna ask you. Yeah, they did take it a little bit too far. Maybe yeah. the guy getting cut on his chin and um, the other guy that was getting like ragged old into the mirror and stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> just, it would look pretty just bad. Using the shards of the mirror. <laughs> but, <laughs> no but, thanks. <laughs> the year that I did it was the first year they ever did the tryout. So, oh, so really? 2012. Yeah. So we had no blueprint of like what what, what we're getting ourselves into. We we're yeah. just rocking up and then. Uh, I came like two or three weeks before the actual tryout. So mm-hmm. I was getting like used to the, the heat and getting acclimatized. But a lot of guys were coming from America like the day before the trial. So I was like, hey, you're going <laughs> to die, man. <laughs> like it is hot. Is not you're going to cramp up and you're going to be hurting. So yeah, um, it was a two-day trial. We did like a wrestling workout, um, Muay Thai workout, BJJ. Mm-hmm. Um, we had to do the swim and then we had to do this run. So the run was the last thing we had to do, but it was on the second day. And they said we're well, going to the back to the gym, and then they lied to us, and then we ended up at the bottom of this big, this big uh, mountain. It's called Big Buddha. So at the top of it is like a Buddha statue. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty much five kilometers, like incline, like it's oh steep, it's gosh. vertical, man. So like even scooters struggle to get up there, like and we're running <laughs> up there. So they, he said pretty much the first one to the top gets a guaranteed spot on this on the team. There's five spots. Oh um, snap! So if you get that, is one, that is that before seeing how good you are at 
No, no that was the our last one. The last yeah. one. Okay, so they already broke us. Like, yeah. we were, everyone's like, you know, jacked up, cramping, yeah. um, bruised, battered. And now it's just like, who wants it the most? It's pretty much yeah. like, show your heart now. Um, I ended up getting second. The yeah. guy that won, he does, because he'd done it before. He'd run up like this, the, the mountain like five five times. So he knew when to like go fast and uh, when it was yeah, going hard. Yeah. My first time ever doing it. So like, <laughs> the whole I was all out. I was already gone. My legs, I couldn't feel my legs like halfway. Yeah. cramping but i was just like i'm uh, determined to i'm not gonna stop you know i'll i'll, I'll die before i'll stop so i uh, got to the top um the net well that night we had the reveal of who made the team um i was the youngest by about 10 years everyone else you know, everyone else had family had kids had um jobs back home i was just there dropped out of uni um <laughs> young hungry but <laughs> my decision was unanimous so all the coaches said Yes. I was the favorite out, out of all of them. So it was pretty cool and, and uh, validating to know that, like, He's having like the sacrifice. Coaches, yeah, uh... yeah, and having them say that, you know, this guy's got potential um, was, was awesome to see. And uh, so, yeah, they kept me on for four years. So every year we had new tryouts, but I just stayed on the team for the all four years. So that was cool, That's cool. to just kind of soak in as much as I could, learn as much, travel as much as I could, fight. I was fighting every month, man, like, I remember one year I fought nine times, Jeez. once every uh, one every every mm-hmm. every month. So, in another country as well. So like I fought in the Philippines, Taiwan, Malaysia, um, Japan, China, um, where else? Guam, um, like places I've never even heard of. Yeah, I was Guam. Yeah. <laughs> I, I fought in Guam. Yeah. That was a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Guam is like the poor man's Hawaii. That's what I heard. <laughs> so like it's got like the islands. It's beautiful, but it's like a navy camp like a navy um base camp there oh so, like, it's full of americans yeah but no it was cool it was cool to have that kind of experience and and learn so much yeah but it's awesome to kind of be back home now yeah being over there you sacrifice you know time away from family and comforts of home yeah but then i couldn't come home without having something yeah, so when yeah i made 100%. the ultimate fighter i got a bit too comfortable there like when i was an ultimate fighter i came back to thailand and then I didn't get signed, but I fought in Japan on a show called Risen, which is like the old pride. Yeah. Um, I ended up losing and um, I knew why I lost because I'd been there for so long in Thailand, four years. I was very, not like comfortable, but I was, I wasn't getting pushed as much as yeah, I could yeah, be. Yeah. And um, that was because uh, our gym got, was getting so big that I missed the intimacy of having a head coach that mm-hmm. would be on your case all the time. Yep. And um, that's what Eugene did for me. So I realized that and I knew I had to come back home and train with Eugene. Um, and this was before anyone was in the UFC. I only think mm-hmm. Dan was back then. Yep. Um, so I came back home and I, I knew that this is where I need to be back home, training out of Auckland, being close to family and uh, build myself up again. So I went to you, I said, how am I going to get back in the UFC? He said, just turn up the training and the rest will take care of itself. So yep. he said that to me, end of, no, start of 2017. And um, it took me two years. And then I finally got signed to the UFC. So I was, I was fighting around China, Asia, yep. um, in Australia. I got on a five fight win streak. And then he surprised me with this, um, that video that Dana White did. Have yeah. you guys seen that? Oh, I haven't seen it. But so seen it? I'll show you after like a... this. So he pretty much had a video made usually after fights it was after israel i think and he fought um they do like these thank you videos to the team to, to yeah, say yeah. thanks for helping out for the camp and all that so we went to the gym at night after sparring oh, i've seen matt, i've seen matt um riddell's one um, quakes um, yeah so i did that one. for him so the first one they did to me um so we're sitting down dana pops up on the screen we're all just waiting to kind of um to see what he has to say and then he says uh, hey kai congratulations you're in the ufc brother and i was like <laughs> didn't really hit me until like i stood up and everyone's clapping and like because i've been given the op- the chance a few times mm-hmm. i just never never happened yeah so when i when he fo- like said it and then i stood up and then went off to eugene and hugged him it wasn't until then when he's like you've made it bro all that hard yeah. work's finally paid you're off like, oh snap <laughs> that's when i hit and i obviously got up cried and i had all those waterworks just because i've worked so hard yeah, for it and it's been such a big journey and then I realized, you know, now, now is the hard work. Now the hard work starts. <laughs> just started, you know? Yeah, now the hard work. <laughs> I was like to Eugene, hey, what weight am I fighting? Because we had pizza and shit um, when this video was Heavy happening. Weight, and I was like, can I have another piece? And he's like, no, nah, you're fighting at Flower. Like, <laughs> you're fighting Steve Play next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was awesome. Um, awesome to kind of have that kind of, yeah. um, him doing that for me. Mm-hmm. And um, it made my debut December 3rd, Adelaide, 2016. 
No, 2018. Mm-hmm. And then had about 50 friends and family fly over. I had a lot, awesome. of, lot of high school mates, a lot of um, close friends said, wherever I fight, We'll, we'll be, be there, there. Mm. so they they all turned up. No, oh, lucky it was there. just there. <laughs> yeah, just uh, like, I'm fighting in Antarctica, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm there. <laughs> so yeah, that was epic having them there, mm. um, and then obviously winning and then getting the fight of the night, 50k bonus on my first fight in the UFC. That's awesome. So 50k bonus. 50. Yeah. 50 smackers, bro. That's nice. Yeah, man. Um, did you have a connection with CKB like as, like before you got back to? Um, um, yeah, we would do a little bit of cross training. So I wasn't originally at City Kip Boxing when I first started MMA. I was at a gym called Strike Force that's out in West Auckland. Oh yeah. Um, and then well, gradually all of all of the guys moved to City yeah. um, just because of the guys we could get in and the talent, and it was just better better um, place for us to train. And obviously having Eugene there and Doug, um, we wanted to learn from them. So our gym is like a collective of all the other gyms in Auckland. Everyone that's oh, okay. kind of taken MMA serious come to city oh, kick boxing just because it breeds you know champions and everyone yeah. knows that yeah they're, they're if you want to be a champion you got to be around champions <laughs> exactly you know when it's sh- when the tide rises all the ship rises so that's that's just how it is um, but what's it like being a part of like a like a because i i remember sort of growing up because like my, my dad used to do martial arts and i've been around some of the martial arts family like he was like if, if you want to take it sort of seriously you've got to kind of go overseas like mm. there, like there's not really a place here where you can sort of breed into like a yeah like you know, championship material. What's it like being at a club where people want to come from overseas mm. to hear? I mean, I had someone stay with us. He was from Germany and he's like, oh, okay, I came back. I want to go see City. Oh, yeah? I want to like, yeah. you know, like see what it's like, try yeah. it out there. But I was like, what's it like being like a day one member of that club? You know, you're not yeah. like on a bandwagon. Yeah. You, you, you were there. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty cool to see, um, I guess, the notoriety and seeing the success of the gym. But with that, it becomes with territory. So you have to keep the circle quite small now so that we can't let anyone just come train with us yeah. Yeah. just because, you know, they just, don't want to come and steal our moves and then ended up fighting us later <laughs> on down the track. It happens all the time. So yeah. with that, we, we've got a lot of internationals that train with us, which is cool. Um, they're part of our team now. and, and yeah. um, Volkanovski, you know, yeah. Yeah, Volkanovski, a lot of um, like other Australians, Europeans that have come over and um, live here now um and americans as well so it's cool to have that relationship and they bring in different looks as well like we're not yeah. specialists in like judo or jiu-jitsu so when we get guys that have that specialty it's like just adds to the it's awesome, awesome to have that kind of look because now we're covering our tracks and everything not just strikers you know when people see you know the city kickboxing name they're like oh yeah this guy's just a kickboxer but it's like we wrestle and do jiu-jitsu just as much if not yeah. more than kickboxing at our gym because we know everyone's going to try to take us down yeah but it's like, nah, mate, we've got something for you, bro. <laughs> here's, here's, I'm a blood. <laughs> where's your black belt? Here's my right hand. <laughs> no, I, well, I see like you're like king of the hill stuff. And, you know, or when you get you have to up against the wall and you yeah, do king, so many takedowns. King down. of the wall. Yeah, but. Yeah. That's crazy. All those kind of, and then like your spider training. Is that, is, yeah. what, what kind of, what does that entail? The spider? spider is a guy's name. So it's his last name. So he invented this workout. He used to be an SAS trainer. Oh, that's um, fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's so a, pretty much you already made, know you just <laughs> pretty much made the hardest workout you can do to get you ready for a fight. So it's fifteen minutes or twenty five minutes if you're fighting a title fight. Um, this morning we did Dan's second to last fighter because he fights in, on Fight Island. This is twenty five minutes. Eh? Yeah, here's a title fight. Uh, not a title fight, but a main event. So mm-hmm. main events are twenty five minutes. So um, pretty much you're getting a fresh fresh person every minute or every thirty seconds, um, and you're either trying to take them down or you're trying to defend the takedown. Um, and it's, yeah, it's the worst conditions you could, you'll ever be put under. So like, yeah, if you can get through that and do 10 weeks of that and not even 10 guys can take you down, then you know, you're ready for the fight. So that brings Jeez. the confidence and that knows when, when you, those workouts don't become easy, but they come like manageable. Oh, so like, like, can you feel yourself getting better though? Yeah. Every week it's like, you feel yourself getting stronger and you can push harder and by the end of it, you're like, Let's, I'm just ready to go, you know? <laughs> Khabib, just, come at me. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> man. I'm ready to swing and stand a bang and get that 50k bonus. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... It's what it's what you need to get ready for those big fights, you know? You want to no, left no stone unturned. You don't want to be... Underprepared. Um, and obviously getting scared of being getting tired. If you know you're not yeah. going to get tired, there's no like mental block there. You just can yeah. go all out. First round, you don't have to like... Yourself yeah, reserve. If you know you've done it for the last ten weeks, yeah, um, you know your gas tank's good. Then that's a weapon in itself. Mm-hmm. Like going into a fight where you know you don't get tired, that's 
you yeah. write, you, that's how you write people yeah. how much like preparation do you do for different fighters like like say if you're fighting like a the difference between like a mcgregor or a nate diaz like mcgregor's gonna try and knock you out in like the first 10 seconds yeah where nate's gonna try and knock you out in, like the last second of the last round yeah so like how do you prepare differently for different fighters it's not too much i don't do too much myself it's mostly my coaches so mm-hmm. you know my, my the team that my coaches uh, bring to the table are the, you know, some of the best in the world, if not the best. So they watch the hours of fight footage of my opponent. It's not just his last fight, but his last 10 fights. Oh, wow. So they pick up habits that he's had his whole career, not just something he's learned, you know, two fights ago that he's been trying to work on. So we know like habits that he's going to be going back to because you can't change something yeah, in a year. Like muscle memory or a few months. Yeah. They're going to go back to what they know and they're like, what got them to the UFC. So. That's why Cody Garbrandt always tries to, Oh, it's just a fling right hooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that knockout on the weekend. Oh, I know, bro. Right. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Eh? I've been matter. trying to fight him for years. Eh? Like, oh, that's the fight I want. I don't know. He he so did, he would you go up to, to Bantam? No, nah, he wanted to come to fly. Uh, and I was like, if you want to come down, I'll welcome you, man. And come down and catch his hand. That's his, a, that's his a son's name is Kai as well. So oh. I was like, not the namesake. You know? <laughs> Do I have to deal like that? <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, it's it's one of these things that you've got to ask for these fights. Now I've been that kind of top of it. Mm. Um, so like Dan asked for Dustin and he got Dustin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, that's massive. Close mouth, don't get fed. So that's how you got to do it. And mm. it's not like you're asking too much. You're all in the same yeah. um, top 10 or top five. Yeah. Someone's got to fight someone. So why not? Yeah, why Call not? what Throw you want. Up, Usually the UFC will listen. If people want to want the fight to happen, then um, the UFC will make it happen. So yeah, just got to call what you want and keep winning if yeah. you keep winning they can't deny you you know your money probably are two or three fights away from the title shot yeah it's just how it is how, how have you dealt with like the the trash talking aspect or like you know the, the show aspect of ufc because like I, I see you from the outside but it's like you sort of let your fist do the talking type yeah. person but like you see like an izzy or like all that you know that they can conor mcgregor, oh conor McGregor you know yeah. like that sort of aspect of the the pre-fight the talking smack like how, how do you deal with that because like you see someone like like I, I think I, I look at you quite similar to like a uh, Jose Aldo, you know, like you kind of just like you're scared of him because like I'm well, not scared of him, but you know, like he will smash you, but he does he doesn't need to tell you he's gonna yeah, smash he you. Just know it's gonna happen. But you know, like you saw how he came against Connor and he yeah. and that got on his head. So yeah. how how do you sort of deal with that sort of aspect of? Yeah, it's just one of those things you gotta to play to your strengths. I've I've always been this kind of way. Like I've never had to talk myself up to fight or yeah. put on this persona that I'm not or um have this like alter ego. But it's the, usually the, mo- the, the, the most silent one in the room is like the most the deadly yeah. or like the one that's small business, you know, mm-hmm. and like I, I do like to show my character, like my side of um, my other side, not just like my serious side. And, and if it's down to it, if I don't like someone, I'll, I'll tell them and, and yeah. it will be personal and I don't, I, I can use that and channel that and, and help it um, make me fight better. But most of the time I just block it out. If the guy's talking shit to me or trying to get under my skin, I don't really bite on it or um, entertain it. I just, yep. it is what it is, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Way. Yeah. We'll find out when we're stepping, keep that same energy. You know, when, when I'm landing bombs on you, you're not going to be shit talking then or yeah, you, you're just going to, your energy will change straight away. Yeah, like, okay, this guy's the real deal or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because if I was in the UFC, I'd be sh- <laughs> <laughs> You'd be faking till you make it. Yeah. Just take everyone's belt. <laughs> Try to get as, as offensive as possible. Uh-huh. <laughs> then you get in the ring. Oh. <laughs> I'm tired. Do I still get paid then? Do I still get paid? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's such a, a volatile sport. Like, you see, like, like it, even if you win, your performance might not be good enough to stay and stay in the game. Like you got someone like man. like a sage sage knock cut. Like he, yeah. you know, he, he won his last fight, but still got cut. Mm. Um, You're only as good as your last, you know. So that's why you got to be on top of your game. Like take two losses in a row, you're not guaranteed a third. So yeah, yeah. you gotta you gotta put everything into these fights, or you just gotta be entertaining as well. Yeah. Um, if you're losing and you're still exciting, they'll keep you around. But you gotta keep winning. Like that's the easiest way to climb the rankings and just to get paid and ultimately we're not doing this for free now like we're trying to make a living <laughs> yeah. and, and um, build yourself up and retire you know with, with something so mm-hmm. yeah do you yeah. have like any like defining moments like in your career sort of thing like moments that have like kind of shaped you? um it's yeah. just been, like a long journey it's been, like, every fight you you're always learning and like always trying to progress um there's been yeah fights that i've um learned more from when I took the loss like in Japan when I got um, fucked up by calf kicks like even to this day like 
they hurt me, you know. <laughs> Calf kicks suck. <laughs> but now, since I t- was on the receiving end, like I know how to use them properly because yeah. I know that it hurts and where the right angle is. And um, you, you see it so many times now, people getting stopped with leg kicks. So um, it's yeah, another Bob weapon. Use leg kicks the whole like the max most, like, yeah. it, it stops everything. Like you can't put any weight on your front foot, which means you can't put um, you can't have heavy hands and you're more ten. Um, tentative to like come forward and then the takedowns there so like it, it creates a massive puzzle for the other guy to solve if you're taking away mm. like his foot like every time he steps in he's getting swept or he's getting kicked yeah, Sucks. yeah. um it, it must be massive watching your friend succeed yeah like that must be just the yeah, best, that must feeling, be the best you know? feeling yeah it's inspiring like even though i lost in december when alex won the world title yeah. how could i not be happy then yeah because i've seen him like we've fought on the same cards in asia we've seen each other you know climb through the rankings and mm-hmm. Um, trained together f- that whole 10 weeks leading up to that fight where yeah it was um, awesome to see and obviously being there in Vegas when Izzy defended his title yeah. um, against Romero not the best fight but you know winning's winning you know yeah. when the All Blacks that went was by the, a conversion also wasn't his fault I feel like that yeah. was the leg kicks as well exactly <laughs> it's like when the All Blacks went by a conversion yeah, you know still win. they still win you know mm-hmm. that's just the name of Steve the game Donovan. Steve Donovan comes out yeah exactly he's <laughs> <laughs> a shirt it's just like <laughs> still got the World Cup exactly um I mean, yeah, we're probably reaching to the end now, so we'll kind of switch to some like more lighthearted questions. Yeah, but, okay. Um, Conor McGregor recently like had his top five fighters um, of history on his, on his on um, his on his Twitter. I mean, he also okay. retired on his Twitter recently. But yeah. um, who who are your maybe like top three goats of goats of MMA? MMA. Um, it's a hard one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe not in order. Maybe just maybe like yeah, the top, top five. three. Okay. Um, well, I like, I'm not being biased, but I like the smaller weight classes, you know, mm-hmm. featherweight and, and under, just because it's so much more faster. There's more, yeah, more, it's more exciting. Yeah. yeah. There's just so much going on. Um, back, this will be back in their prime, you know, so yeah. not, you know, after they um, were fighting uh, past their like 30s or 40s, but probably, you know, Uriah Favors, definitely one of one of the guys that I've looked up to just because he's like a pioneer of like yeah, man. Bantam, yeah. bantam weights or, or the California lighter weight. kid. Yeah, exactly. Um, so him, um, you gotta you gotta do pay homage to um, DJ, DJ, nah, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. you got traded. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, well, I'll I'll say, I'll, I'll, oh my god, I might get a bit shit with this, but Connor, you, you gotta you gotta give him props when it's due, man. Like that yeah, guy has enough. put the sport on another level where it's like you know, 100%. bigger than yeah, bigger than entertainment, you know, like. When the Mayweather fight happened, like the the whole world yeah. stopped for that fight. So you, the Mayweather, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 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 so yeah, uh, Mayweather, and then, um, not even combat sports, but like you know, oh, not not just MMA, but fighters that I gotta say, David Tour for sure, Massive. Mike Tyson, and yeah. Muhammad Ali. You know, yeah, th- three guys that um, is, uh... yeah, just heavy yeah. hitting, just pure technique. Pure violence. Yeah, yeah David Two is like a pioneer for like Australasian sport. Yeah, like, yeah everyone sport knows as a whole. Everyone knows David Tua. Yeah. Mike Tyson. Oh, have you seen Mike Tyson's comeback video? Yeah, that is terrifying. He's, bro. he's like fifty. <laughs> he's oh my gosh, bro, he's fast. Back to like he never <laughs> left. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like like that whole like I want to kill you thing is sort of gone. He's more like composed, yeah. and he's like oh. That's even scarier. You see him training Francis and Ganu. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stop that, man. <laughs> Just creating um, super soldiers out here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. And uh, Muhammad Ali. He's he's not just a pioneer like in sport. He's just like a Icon, civil yeah. rights pioneer. Yeah. You know? it's social just, justice. He's a great as well. guy. Um, I think that's about it. Like no, John we, Jones. You don't like John. Well, we don't like John nah, Jones here. Like, nah. Sorry, man. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how you are, John Jones. You might be the biggest dick, but. Every time I watch you fight, you just the goat. <laughs> I thought you lost that last fight. Yeah, it was close though. Could have done. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dude. But anyways, yeah, I think that's, that's about. You got anything else that you want to ask? No, I just say um, appreciate you coming in. Awesome, yeah, bro. no, it's been massive. Bye, I appreciate and like yeah, the attitude that you have Shop, towards bro. your career now, like being so self aware of that stuff. Yeah, and like, like where you're heading yeah, and how how you want to act. The setbacks that you've had, mm. launched into like what you what you have now. So, Shop, bro. I just want to know uh, when's the album coming out. The album, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could could Maybe. be dropping through the mixtape <laughs> alongside the, the clothing. Or that. <laughs> you watch yeah. out for the clothing brand. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Coming out soon, real soon. My mate Oni, um, 
we're working on a collab together and also with engage as well my other sponsor we're working on like a lifestyle range outside of all the fighting and stuff we're doing like just normal yeah man normal clothes for people to wear so if you like it you like my style um yeah, hopefully you, know, you like a style look at mm -hmm. that. <laughs> that's what we like to hear so i yeah. mean make sure you set yourself up for you know after your sports after everything you go through oh, yeah. you gotta have you know if, if you're a high level athlete you know you gotta have more than just what you're doing exactly. you've gotta have plan b's exactly ah thank you very much appreciate awesome. it man thanks for your time appreciate you eat your wig and um <laughs> <laughs> and don't get into fights don't get <laughs>